Tis the season for Christmas songs, and in this episode of Behind the Song, let's take a look at the first Christmas song released by a former Beatle after the Fabs broke up. Happy Christmas, War is Over by John Lennon and Yoko Ono. If you like this episode, please give it a like and hit subscribe. Released on December 1st, 1971 in the U.S. and a year later in the U.K., the song was built on more than two years of activism and peaceful protest by Lennon and Ono that started, of course, with their famous bed-ins for peace, focused on protesting the Vietnam War, beginning on their honeymoon in 1969. They launched an international billboard campaign in 12 major cities around the world to display their thought-provoking message in stark black and white. A declaration which simply said, War is over, if you want it. Happy Christmas from John and Yoko. By October of 1971, Lennon had released his single Imagine in the U.S., which quickly went to number three on the Billboard chart. It remains his most successful solo single, with lyrics encouraging peace. And with its success, he realized that putting his messages of protest into song had the ability to make the most impact. He said it made him understand that it was necessary to put your political message across with a little honey. The Beatles had a history of releasing Christmas singles directly to their fan club each Christmas from 1963 to 1969. So, with the Christmas season approaching, Lennon got to work. Building on the Billboard campaign, he set out to write a song that would expand on the idea of peaceful change and unity with uplifting lyrics that would feel like the spirit of Christmas without overdoing the sentimentality of most holiday songs. In early October, he recorded a demo on acoustic guitar while he and Ono were staying at the St. Regis Hotel in New York City. Another demo would be recut in late October after they moved to an apartment in Greenwich Village. Ono received co-writing credit but it's unclear how much she participated in the original demo because she wasn't a part of that first recording. What is clear is that Lennon was intent on recording this song and releasing it as quickly as possible in advance of the Christmas season. By the way, the other Beatles would later follow with their own solo Christmas songs. George Harrison came next with his Ding Dong Ding Dong in 1974. Then Paul McCartney with his Wonderful Christmas Time in 1979, and finally Ringo in 1999 with I Want to Be Santa Claus. But John Lennon was first. Since he had recently worked with producer Phil Spector on his previous two albums, John Lennon, Plastic Ono Band, and Imagine, which was released in the U.S. just a few weeks before, Lennon asked Spector to once again produce the song. There are some sonically similar songs to Lennon's composition that must be mentioned here. There are structural similarities to the traditional English ballad, Skewball, and even more so to the 1963 version that follows the folk music tradition of borrowing music from one another by Peter, Paul, and Mary called Stewball. Give that one a listen and you'll really hear the similarities to Lennon's song. Also, Phil Spector commented that the rhythm in the song's opening line is almost identical to the 1961 single I Love How You Love Me by the Paris Sisters, which Spector himself also produced. As far as the recording, what a lineup. The session players, some of whom had played previously as part of the Plastic Ono band, were called into the record plant studio in New York in the final days of October. Some of these names may be familiar to you, along with John Lennon on lead vocals and guitar and Yoko Ono singing. You had Hugh McCracken, Chris Osborne, Teddy Irwin, and Stuart Scharf on guitar. Klaus Vormann flew in from Germany to play bass, arriving a day or two late because of air travel delays. Nicky Hopkins played piano, chimes, and the glockenspiel, a very Christmassy instrument indeed and Jim Keltner sat behind the drums and played sleigh bells. May Pang sang backing vocals on this song. Yes, that May Pang, who in 1971 was working as Lennon and Ono's personal assistant. 
and who would later in the decade have an Ono-approved affair with Lennon during his 18-month lost weekend while he and Ono were separated. Finally, the Harlem Community Choir was brought in to sing on the song. 30 children between 4 and 12 years of age recorded the backups in sing-along chorus on Halloween of 1971. The song begins with whispers from Ono and Lennon to their children from previous marriages. Ono whispers, Happy Christmas, Kyoko, to her daughter, Kyoko Cox, born in 1963 during her marriage to filmmaker Anthony Cox. And Lennon whispers, Happy Christmas, Julian, to his first son, also born in 63 during Lennon's marriage to Cynthia Powell. And then the lyrics begin. So this is Christmas, and what have you done? Another year over, and a new one just begun. And so this is Christmas, I hope you have fun. The near and the dear one, the old and the young. A very merry Christmas, and a happy new year. Let's hope it's a good one, without any fear. And then it's on to the next verse, an all-inclusive vision of unity at Christmas time. And so this is Christmas, for weak and for strong, for rich and the poor ones, the road is so long. And so happy Christmas for black and for white, for yellow and red one, let's stop all the fight. These repeat, and then the Harlem Community Choir finishes the song with a counter melody, singing, War is over, if you want it, war is over now. When this song was quickly released in the States in time for Christmas of 1971, it wasn't an immediate hit, partly due to the short time frame between the holiday and when it was in stores. Its release was delayed until the next year in the UK because of a publishing dispute there over Ono's contribution. But it went to number four when it was finally released in the UK in the fall of 1972. The original 7-inch single was issued on transparent green vinyl with some interesting artwork on the pressing. A sequence of images showing Lennon's face morphing into Ono's. The B-side is Ono's single, Listen, the Snow is Falling, which was recorded during the same sessions. The cover photograph for the sleeve, which shows Lennon and Ono surrounded by the Harlem Community Choir, May Pang, and the session performers, was taken by Ian McMillan, who also took the cover photo, by the way, for the Beatles' Abbey Road album, and had previously taken photos of Ono for his own work. The first time Happy Christmas, War Is Over appeared on an album was on the only compilation of Lennon's solo recordings released in his lifetime, on the Shaved Fish album in 1975. After John Lennon's tragic, untimely death in 1980, the song again re-entered the chart, and since then, it's become a standard at Christmas time. It's been reissued several times over the years, and it's been covered by many other artists, including Celine Dion, Maroon 5, John Legend, and Miley Cyrus and Mark Ronson with Sean Ono Lennon, John and Yoko's son. Happy Christmas, War is Over accomplished John Lennon's vision of putting a little honey on his message, urging peace and unification, without being overly saccharine. The Vietnam War is over, but now in 2023, I wonder what Lennon would write about the wars currently raging in the Middle East and in the Ukraine. All of his protest songs, among them Imagine, Give Peace a Chance, and Power to the People, endure and are as important now as they were when he was alive to write them. And every Christmas time, as we wind down the year and reflect, aren't we lucky to have this message of peace, harmony, and goodwill in the soundtrack of our season? I'm Janda, and this has been Behind the Song. If you enjoyed this episode, give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Special thanks, as always, to Christian Lane for the music you hear on these podcast episodes. Check us out on TikTok. And you can find me on the air weekdays from 9 to 2 Central and 97.1 FM, The Drive in Chicago, and at WDRV.com. On the way, much more classic rock and roll. 